The trader event, even though it's over, still has the economy turned on its head. Combine some really rich folks who didn't give any money with some really poor folks who gave everything, and you have a combination of this supply and demand that has made crafting items and barter items insanely valuable, even more so than before the, the uh, I almost said white, before the event. So this video is to help you pick the crafts to get the most out of your hideout. We're gonna compare everything in profit per hour, though I will talk about some of the longer crafts to do when you log off to get the most bang for your buck. Now I use Tarkov's market site because it just works so damn well. He's got a great overlay and everything else. I suggest you go check it out. Um, I use them, I do the Patreon, all that stuff. That's how you get most of these things, but that's what we use because it's clear for you guys. It allows me to enter in prices. That way I can get rid of some of the weird swings that happen from time to time, as well as find some of the little hidden gems that just are covered up or obscured by the, the averages. Now these videos do affect the market a little. It's gonna make some of these crafts not as good as we talk about them, but it only lasts for a day or two. And on top of that, if you watch really closely, you'll see that even though one craft might go away, because it does that, another one I didn't talk about fills its place and you can make a ton of money there, sometimes even more. So just keep an eye out for those. But let's get started and hop right into the med station. So as we hop into here, two crafts that I'm crafting right now are Pile of Meds and SJ6s. There are others and we'll talk about those in a sec, but those are your top, your top two crafts right now. Now with Pile of Meds, the key is to get Augment around 14,000. Now it's all over the place. I've been buying it anywhere from 10 to 20,000. 14 is a good goal, but even at 20,000, you're gonna make money with these. You can get your bandages and your AI2s from therapists, though there are ways like fence to get them a little bit cheaper or you know partially used up uh, AI2s, for example. But then shoot for 15,5 on your, uh, your Pile of Meds. This is gonna net you almost 27,000 rubles an hour, and that's with no skills, no hideouts. Yeah, I have it all turned off. Like if I turn these on, like for my progress where I'm at, it bumps me to 47,000 rubles per hour, but that's not fair because I have maxed hideout and everything else, so we won't look at it like that. So just keep that in mind, you're gonna be able to beat most of these numbers, even with just a little bit of skills. Now next up is the SJ6s. This one's pretty straightforward. For this, you wanna to shoot to buy your pile of meds for 13,000. If you can get them less, awesome, but that's kind of the, where, I, if I see them under 13, I buy them up because I use them to craft other things as well. Uh, SJ1s you wanna get for 53,000 or less. Now if you watch the barter on, on uh, Therapist, you can sometimes get these as cheap as 45,000, which just adds that just much more money to them. And if I ever find uh, Knackles, yes, I know it's NaCl, sodium chloride, get corrected constantly about that. I know what it is, guys. I just like saying knackle. <sighs> Anyways, I put these in my secure container because they are worth about 30,000. Maybe if I can't sell them, I use them to crest up SJ6s anyways, I don't have to buy one. And then at the end, shoot for at least 74,000 on your SJ6, and you're gonna net 13, 14, maybe 15,000 rubles an hour. Now, as a side note, one of the things that I always do, I run golden stars. And when I run them, I get them down to one or two uses out of 10, and then I craft them into propotol. Now see, I count that cost sunk into my raids. So I put it as a zero here. Well, if I do that, I make about 95,000 rubles an hour. The totals, you know, you make about 95, 100,000 rubles, which is enough for me to buy another golden star. So it's just this infinite loop of me buying golden stars for free. So that's what I do there. Now, some of these other crafts can be profitable. I wanna point them out. Things like IFAX, AFAX, Salewas, Grizzlies. And the way you get them to be cheap is instead of spending these enormous prices like 11,000 on a cat, what I'll do is I'll, I'll come to fence. I check them all the time and I check his meds. And look right here, 1893, I can get a splint. Now I can use that to craft the Grizzly. There's three cats here for uh, 1820, I'll buy those. You know, you can get a AI2 here for 1900, that one was sold. You know, bandages a little bit cheaper, things like that. You see IFAX on here for, uh, you know, two, 3000 because they're used up. Now I do have six fence, so I do get some stuff that other people don't, but everybody can look here for those and it will save you a little bit of money. And when you go look at, for the Grizzly, for example, what, I don't even remember what it was. We'll say it was 3,000 we spent on that and then we spent 2,000 on each of the cats. If you look at that, now the Grizzly's making you money. Or at the very least, you're spending about 30,000 and I use tons of Grizzlies. So if I'm only spending 30,000 to craft these, that's just about as cheap as me bartering for them. Now I always sell them because I'm always shooting for about 45,000 on the sale with Grizzlies. So you can make a little bit of money there doing that. But it, like I said, it works with Salewas. If you get these Calyx, you know, for like, I don't know, you get them for like 1500 off a fence. And some of these other prices, the painkillers, you get those for like 2000. And now you're selling a Salewa for, you know, I shoot for about 2200 on them. Uh, you use fence, you can make some decent money on some of these meds. It's one of the things that I use fence most for is buying meds off of him that everybody else just get rid of. And then I craft with those. But we've kind of beat the med station to death. So let's uh, let's hop over to the, uh, the nutrition unit. I like walking in the hideout. I think it's cooler for you guys. 
maybe you guys don't care, but over at the Jewish unit right now, I am crafting slickers and whiskeys. Now there's two things to keep in mind here with these is they are very volatile. Whiskeys get burned through. You will see them go from 45, 50 K all the way to like 90, hundred. I shoot for 75,000. Try not to get greedy. And then I don't get caught sitting with them or them not selling. Uh, I always try to buy vodka is a lot cheaper than his. I have 32,000. We're going to run with the average. You can get them down into the 25,000. It's not super easy, but you get them. You just buy your waters off a therapist or close thereof. Shoot for 37,000 on your chocolates and then about 25,000 on your, your tea. And if you're selling for 75,000, boom, there's 33,000 an hour you're making on whiskeys. Now, if you push that 80, 90, obviously it's more, but that risk is up to you. I'm gonna mention the slickers, but I'm super skeptical about this right now for two reasons. One, the component prices go all over the place. Uh, the price for Oat Flakes is 20K. That's what I buy them at. I buy, try to buy them from less than that, but I see them push 30, 35K. You can always get crackers at the 14 too, because you just buy them off the therapist. And the same thing with chocolate. You'll see chocolate down in like 33, 34, 35, and then sometimes it's at 50. So it's one of those deals you just gotta watch the prices. If you get them, uh, buy them up if you see them that cheap or take them out of rate if you, if you can. Um, craft them into slickers, sell those slickers for like 15, five if, you, if you're able to, and you'll net about 16,000 an hour. Now I hesitate to mention this because I don't wanna ruin it for myself, but I will anyways, I'll be a nice guy. I've been making a fortune off of vodka. I buy moonshine at whatever price it is, you know, whether it's 240, 230, 220, 250. And I remember that. Then I add 60,000 to that number. So let's say I buy them at 240, 60,000 is 300, right? So now we're at 300,000. That means I got to sell my vodkas for about, you know, 33, 34,000 a piece. Well, it never ends up there. I almost always sell these things for like 45,000. When you do that, you can see how much money you make. It's harder to do. You have to sit on these. I usually sell them in stacks of 20 or 30 because that's what the guys that are doing the, the uh, thick case barter are going after. But there can be a ton of money to make here. It's also really good at raising your flea market rating, which just helps you get extra slots, which helps you make more money. Now with the, with the nutrition unit, you have, uh, you have the water collector and the booze generator and the water collector you should just always have running. I have three, everybody always asks how I have three. It's because I have max hideout management, level 51 hideout management. It gives me three filter slots. But regardless, remember that it only uses 66% of the filter. So 66 out of hundred units to craft that one super water. So even though super waters might be 80, 90,000 and your filter is 60, you can't look at those prices because actually I only burn about 50% because of my skills. So I take a $60,000, $70,000 filter and turn that into $80,000, $90,000 or rubles. I always say dollars. So uh, I usually sell my super waters. If I don't use them to craft moonshine, what you want to do is entirely up to you. And speaking of moonshine, uh, this one is a cool craft. I usually do pretty good with it. You, like I said, I buy my super waters or whatever, or you just use the one that's found in rate, whichever you want to do. Sugar was really cheap for a couple of days. We're starting to see it get expensive again, as you can see here. Shoot for about 70, 72, 73,000, you're okay. If it gets any more expensive than that, you need to go look for barters um, or just not buy the sugar. Because once you start pushing 80, you're not going to make money. But like this, again, like, like the vodka, I wait till I get 10, 15, 20 of these. And then I sell them in a big stack. Because again, the guys doing the thick barter trades, they'll actually go down on the list. So if we go look at the, the moonshine right now, sell them for 260, right? They'll look through here and they'll look for one of these big stacks and they'll pay more for that just simply because they don't have to sit here and buy, you know, 15 stacks of these things. So you can actually charge a little bit more aim to where you can see it on the front of the page, but you'll make more money doing it that way with the moonshine. Now we'll roll over to the Intel center here really quick. This one's pretty straightforward and simple. There's not a lot to talk about here and the prices are kind of weird. I craft uh, thumb drives and Intel's. And if you guys are wondering how I craft two things at once, that's max crap. It lets me craft two things at once. You're not making a lot of money here. You're only making a couple of thousand rubles because thumb drives are so cheap. And Intel was really cheap, though it's coming back. You know, it might be a good idea to buy up a bunch of thumb drives now and craft them as Intel kind of climbs up in price again, which I think it's gonna do. Plus, if, you, if you're buying them, you can use them for the trade, the barter with Jaeger anyways. You know, I usually buy these things in pack of sixes. I, I, I buy three to do the craft for the Intel and I buy three for this barter, which you can sell the therapist for 195,000 and just make free money. Now you can make a little bit of money with VPXs, especially if you get some SSDs, non-found in RAID, you get them out of RAID um, or G phones. But the problem, the big problem with VPXs, and we'll look at the chart here, is they're just not a stable price. You know, they're all the way down here in the hundreds. They were a little higher during the event, but that was for other stuff um because of fence what was fence paying for them but if you look they're pretty much back where they were before the 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 100k maybe 105 is the high end of what you're going to get for them so unless you've got non-founded rate components i wouldn't be crafting you're just not going to make money with them 
Now the laboratory is actually a pretty cool place to craft. There's a lot of options here. It's not just cool because we have our, our, our little friend inside the blue room here. Um, it's cool because a lot of the crafts you have. Bleach is one of the most powerful crafts for making money in the entire hideout because of the components and how much they fluctuate. Plus bleach gets used in tons of barters, so it's always moving, it's always churning. Um, so I usually craft until I get 10, 15, 20 in a stack, and then I sell them. So we'll craft this real quick and I'll start the other one. We won't sell that one because I want to talk about it a little bit more. It's actually the more profitable craft right now, but there's a specific reason for that. Uh, bleach, you want to shoot for 15,000 on your sodium, 13,000 on your alkali, and soap right now is super expensive, 25,000. If you're getting it less than that, or if you're getting a non-found and raid because it's in your secure container, one of the best places to use this right now is bleach. Craft those, aim for 17,000. Sometimes you can even get 18 or 19, but aim for 17,000 on your bleach and you're gonna make yourself about 36,000 an hour. Now, the beauty of this is, is because it's kind of a fast craft, like let's say you find sodium for 12,000, which happens, and then you get lucky and you get a soap for let's say 15,000. Let me change these numbers to actually update. They didn't do it here real quick. And then we'll just go on the high side and we say you get bleach for 18,000. You sell it for that. You're, you guys can see how much money you're making here, right? 62,000 an hour, it's absurd. It's one of the most powerful crafts. It's such a good craft, but you gotta get good at buying your components. Now the other one, this Aramid craft is good for a couple of reasons. One, it's super easy. You just gotta get a packet and it gives you two Aramid. And for whatever reason, Aramid has gone through the roof. If we look here, we'll go look at the chart. Um, it dipped down a little bit, but we're seeing it back in 40, 50. I was selling Aramid today for about 55,000 a couple of times, which when I only spend 25 or even less on a packa, then you can just see how much money is to be made there. And it's an easy craft, there's no thought to it. Now you can get it for 29,000 from Ragman. And I'll go look at it here, I'll show you guys real quick um, in the deal. You can just buy it for 29,000 from Ragman and roll. But we can go back to fence again and we might get lucky and see one here. Oh, we did, look at this. Whoa, give me, let, me, let, me, let me get it. All right, 21,000, we're buying that one. Oh, we didn't get it. Maybe we get the 26. So we got the 26. Um, that 20, that 21 was probably on Ragman 4. But you can buy them off of here, you can get them a little bit cheaper, usually in the 25s. But I've seen them down as low as 20,000 on the ones on uh, Fence Loyalty Level 6, you know, Max Scab Rep. But you come down, you craft it, and boom, it's just that easy. You don't even have to think about it. You see, I've already got a bunch of them I bought up as I see them, I buy them because it's just an easy craft. But that doesn't mean that's all there is. There's so many crafts in, in the laboratory, especially the fabric crafts. They're all really good at making money. The scab vest is great. What you wanna do is barter your scab vest from Jaeger. I put 15,000 in here, but you can get your slickers for cheaper than that. Or if you're crafting them, they're actually quite a bit cheaper. Nonetheless, turn those into ripstop. If you don't wanna do that, shampoo is great. Especially if you're using bottles of water up, like you're using these to stay hydrated between raids, you can use a one out of 60 bottle of water. We'll crank the price of soap back up to 25,000 here. Uh, and we'll say zero on the bottle of water because you're using it to stay hydrated. And I'm not even gonna touch the shampoo price, it's higher than that, but you know, you're making 37,000 an hour. And then after that, you have the, the Cordura craft with sling, black, sling bags. Can't say that right. You buy them off of uh, Ragman for about 2,000 a piece, sell your Cordura for 45, and you've been able to even push 50, 55, 60. You can see what that does on prices. So there's tons of craft in the laboratory. Most of the fabrics work out. Pick one that works for you or buy up all the components that you can find and just roll through your crafts as you can. Now, the last station is my favorite because of all the options here, but it's also the most, you can make the most amount of money in your hands down, even more than you can in the laboratory with the, the bleach craft, especially if you get good at buying your components. Now, the key to the workbench is having four or five crafts you can go to. Right here, we got wires right now because wires are just absurd. Power cords turned into wires, easy craft, makes you a ton of money. I've also been leaning heavily on circuit boards, but it's not the only one. I like the circuit board craft because it's easy. I gotta buy a DVD and these are kind of expensive right now, so we won't do that. We'll leave that one out until I can go look. But you buy DVDs, you buy grenades. Some of these other crafts are really good. Another one is the green gunpowder. So again, lots of choices here. Just make sure you're getting your components and you're storing them and then you can do really well. For power cords, aim for about 25,000. Try to get them that or less. And you can get them a lot less than that. And then wires, you've been able to sell them for 17,500 pretty easily. And even push 18, 19 if you time it just right. If you're doing that, you're making 38,000 an hour or more. After that is Vogs. Um, pretty simply, just aim for 16,000 on both the fuses and grenades. They're not perfectly even, but I like. in my mind, I like just picking a number for both of them because then it's easy. If I see grenades under 16, I buy them. If I see fuses under 16, I buy them. And then you just craft them and then shoot for about 31,000 on selling the Vogs, and you're gonna be pushing 30,000 an hour. And again, like we were talking about, the circuit board's really easy, but you wanna make sure you get your, whoopsies, you wanna make sure you get your DVDs under 12,000 uh, and sell your circuit boards for 15. 
And finally, for whatever reason, we haven't been able to talk about gunpowders for a while now. And I, 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 it's sad because gunpowder used to be some of my favorite crafts. For whatever reason, we've seen green gunpowder just go through the absolute roof. And I can't explain it. Haven't had a chance to really figure it out yet, but we've seen gunpowder pushing 70, 80,000 rubles. It's in about 70,000 right now. But the key to this is making sure that you have spot two or part two done, I believe. It's part two or part three, I can't remember. Um, but it unlocks M67s from uh, Peacekeeper that you can buy for $89. That equals about 9,800 rubles. We'll say it's 98.28. Then you buy your RGDs from Proper for 4,700. Sell your Eagle for 70,000 and you're gonna make 23,000 profit. It's a super easy craft. You buy everything from the traders. You don't even need to think about it. It's, it's what I've always called a lazy man's craft because it's easy. Wait till you get a stack of four or five of the green gunpowders and then push them to the market. Now there are tons of other crafts in here. We're not gonna go with all the rest of the one on the workbench. I'm sure there's some that you guys like. You know, some of the other circuit board craft, the, the, the capacitors, the Nixer lenses. There's all sorts of stuff in here that people really like. I'm not gonna mention them all. If they work for you, great. When it comes to the hideout, that is the most important thing to making money with crafting. And that is simply learn a craft and learn the prices of the components. Once you do that, it's easy because you know what to look for. You can buy them, you know where the peaks and valleys are at. And if you have that craft figured out, you're gonna make more money than anything I can mention here. But I think we'll wrap it up there. Appreciate you guys watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't so you see these when they first pop out so you can get the most out of them. Um, like if you'd like the video and that's pretty much it. Wish you the best of luck in your raids. We'll see you in Tarkov.